Well, it doesn't matter if you record something weird, I'll just edit it out. So, <laughs> DIC is a, a condition that happens not too often, but when it does happen, we have a big problem. The first thing you have to know is that there has to be some type of trauma or some type of stressful situation. Usually you see it when the patient is already dealing with an issue that's, in, that's in, in involving bleeding. Like if a woman just gave birth and she is bleeding from the endometrium, like most women do, uh, or all women do, then that may cause this particular condition that I'm gonna discuss right now. Or if the patient has sepsis, or they've had um, traumatic burns, anything that puts a lot of stress in the body will activate this condition of DIC. You have the trauma, then the patient begins to usually bleed, right? Or let me, let me say it like this instead. That trauma sometimes includes a bleeding issue, right? And so whether it's trauma that does not include bleeding like sepsis, although sepsis, we discussed how it destroys the blood vessel wall and that causes bleeding technically, or bleeding like a woman that just gave birth, your body overclots, overstimulation, of clotting cascade. So your body starts clotting everywhere, excessively. So you develop blood clots on your hands, on your fingers, um, all over your body. You can develop a stroke, you can have a heart attack. You, have, you can go into kidney failure if it obstructs the renal artery. My point is, that's what's happening. Your body overcompensates, overclots, and it uses up all of its clotting factors. So clotting factors are gone. So once the clotting factors are gone, if you do have an active bleed, can you clot it? Mm. So the patient will start bleeding again. And they start bleeding again, they have no clotting factors to fix that. So what do we have to anticipate is going to be ordered for this patient? If they're, yeah, if, they're, if they lose enough blood, but what else to, to fix this specific, not to fix it, but to help with what's missing? Yeah, you give them clotting factors, cryoprecipitate, plasma, frozen plasma. That's what you give them. And our biggest role, guys, is to ensure that the patient does not develop any uh, strokes, any of those specific deficits that can cause permanent damage. How do we treat this? Well, we have to alleviate the cause, of course, whatever is causing the issue. But during the actual event, believe it or not, we use heparin. And heparin is a little, you know, it's a little controversial because heparin helps you thin the blood out. That's one of this patient's issues, that they're bleeding. But, like you said back there, you can give a blood transfusion if the patient bleeds too much, right? And that'll keep the patient in the game, it'll keep them alive. But if they have a blood clot and they have an infarct or an infarct, that's gonna cause permanent damage. So we can deal with interventions to help the excessive bleeding, but we cannot afford for the patient to clot excessively and die from a stroke from a heart attack. That's why we still use heparin either way because we can fix that a lot more. We can combat the issues of, of bleeding a lot more effectively than we can the issues with the clotting. Does that make sense? Guys? What's the full name of DIC? Disseminated intravascular coagulation. What if I didn't know it? Uh, why are you asking me that? What if I didn't know it? So you'd be recording. I'm you know? edit this out. Can you write it? Oh. Yeah. <laughs> keep recording though, keep recording. Disseminated, whoops, that's a D. Intravascular coagulation. Yeah, that's DIC. Disseminated means it's spread out, it's, it spreads everywhere, it's all over the body, it's not one specific location. Does that make sense, guys? If the patient's blood, any situation where your patient's blood pressure is dropping significantly, like this patient might be going into shock pretty soon, right? We can give medications like Desmopressin, which is, or, or DDAVP. This is synthetic antidiuretic hormone. But what it does is it constricts blood vessels and it retains fluids. And that's how you maintain your hemostatic, sta your hemodynamic status. Any questions on that, folks? Yeah. 